Welcome to Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. Today's the 21st of January, and I've had a few days to reflect on this past season. And the obvious question that comes up is whether I'm disappointed with the farm that I bought. You know, if you look back at my history of hunting whitetail deer in Iowa, I've had some, I mean, obviously as a boy, you know, you bounce around quite a bit, but as an adult, I've had some really good spots to hunt. The farm that I owned in Southern Iowa I had a lot of deer on it and some really big ones, uh, some really nice mature bucks. So the question is, uh, given last season and how hard I hunted and how few deer that I saw, uh, whether I'm disappointed with this farm. And uh, if not, uh, why not? <laughs> and if so, what am I going to do about it? So before we dive deeper into that question, let's hear from our sponsors and that will give me a few seconds here to get my thoughts together. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. I'm not going to say that I'm necessarily disappointed. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised I think that it wasn't better than than what it is. You know, I didn't know that in that part of the state of Iowa, the area where I grew up, uh, in fact, I hunted 2020 and 2021 on a lease that was really darn good. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think there were really areas that were poor or let's say below average for what you'd expect for hunting in Iowa. But this neighborhood is definitely a different one. Uh, it's unique. There weren't hardly any deer there to start with. It was almost a blank slate because it was all cattle country. And the piece that I bought had a lot of timber on it, but it was pastured and there wasn't any permanent food there. So the deer, the deer numbers were really low. And then during the winter, there really wasn't anything there to hold them. So they would, I think they'd go down into the river valleys or they would move, you know, they, they would leave that area and go someplace else for the winter. So I think the history of, of the deer activity on that farm uh, didn't lend itself to uh, seeing a, a, a really uh, high number of deer, which I knew that going in. It was, I, I remember driving through there in January of uh, 22, and that was right after we'd bought it. And I drove through the farm on a tractor I think I only cut two sets of tracks. I bet I went almost a mile through the snow following some of those four, four wheel drive, four wheeler uh, trails through the property and I only cut a couple sets of tracks. Maybe saw one or two rubs. Uh, not, you, you know, obviously it was, it was a, a low deer number. Uh, but I was hoping that the percentage of mature bucks in the population would be higher. And that's been probably the biggest disappointment was there just weren't any mature bucks there. And so you're starting basically from ground zero with a couple of them. There were two on the farm, three on the farm, I guess, that I knew of that were a little bit older. And uh, those were the bucks that I hunted. But, you know, they weren't high genetic deer. Uh, not that you have to have high genetic deer to have an enjoyable hunt. But it sure would be nice to say I'm trying to produce them and then to be successful in doing that. Uh, you know, when you're trying to produce them and, and you aren't, uh, you know, that's kind of where some of the disappointment sets in. I think there's a lot of upside here. And I've talked about it uh, a number of times on the Dream Farm series and a little bit here on the Bowhunting Whitetail series. That's the fact that I don't really want tons of deer. Uh, you know, people think that if you're going to own a property for deer hunting, you want a lot of deer, but that can really work against you. It's harder to keep the deer stress free. It's harder to uh, uh, grow habitat that, that's really long-term and productive for the deer if there's a lot of them. Uh, there's species of, of browse that the deer will eat during the, the course of a, of a normal year uh, and they'll just wipe it out. If you have a lot of deer, uh, there's some browse species that you'll never see on your property again. The deer will wipe it out and then you're sitting there with basically, you know, the, the things that prosper, the things that deer don't really like. Uh, so I don't really want a farm like that. What I want is a farm that has a, a really high quality of deer, very uh, stress-free, 
bucks and does both that are super healthy you know the fawns are you know they, they come out uh, you know ready to grow they're not fighting uh, and I would say to a certain extent the southern Iowa herd was overpopulated we tried really hard over the years uh, gosh one year I think it was in the early 2000s for about three or four years actually we shot every doe that came within bow range um, we had the permits then with a quota system that they just initiated and I had friends and neighbors and I had a buddy that got a, a bunch of tags for the late rifle season that they had down in that area and I think he killed like 12 does in, in one sit with a 270 sitting up on a hill overlooking a food plot. I remember he left with a utility trailer piled full of deer. Uh, so there were a lot of deer. So we fought that for quite a while, or I did, and then I don't think I ever really got ahead of it. You know, it's always difficult to grow the kind of browse that the deer really wanted. So that's one upside to not having a high density. Um, the other upside is that when you've got a lot of deer, you create stress, and then the deer just, you know, even if they have enough food, there's still social stress that results from having a lot of deer. There's been a lot of studies done on that, and I've talked to a lot of biologists over the years that have confirmed that, that in the lower densities, if you can get the age on the bucks, you're gonna get higher quality deer. You're gonna get you know, bigger antlers for the same size or the same age uh, of, a, of bucks in areas with lower density, lower stress, as long as the food is there. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm focused on. So disappointed, uh, I think I was disappointed in the hunting. Uh, whether it was the mistakes that I made or just the strange year that we had where there were so many acorns and the deer weren't traveling at all. I mean, they literally weren't moving and my trail cameras verified that. Um, I went days. I think there was one stretch there, maybe I hunted for, gosh, I don't know if it was seven to 10 days straight and never saw a single deer. Uh, the types of places where you would expect to see them, you know, the, the parts of the season where you'd say, okay, this is what the deer should be doing. And then you would do those things and uh, you know, they, they just weren't there. So the deer were living more into the timber. And I've always been really reluctant about going deep into the timber after the deer, because I feel like it's sort of a one and done, or maybe you get to do it once in a while. But if you have a steady diet of going deep in after the deer, pretty soon you're gonna push them out of that area completely. I like it better when I can hunt them on the fringe. Let them have some sanctuaries, let them have the places that, you know, where they wanna be, leave those places alone and then catch them on the fringe as they're traveling between two you know, sanctuary type areas or two bedding areas or when they're traveling maybe from bed to food. But to go right into where the deer bed, that's pretty risky. And I think that's what it would have taken this past season because of the acorns. I don't think they were leaving. Uh, I, th I think they were, they were just staying in the timber a lot and uh, just not coming out much. So anyway, disappointment. Uh, yes, I was disappointed in the hunting. Uh, am I disappointed in the farm? I, I think time will tell on that. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that I am yet. You know, I think it's gonna be, you know, I've said it before, it's a five year project and I'm on year two. So you keep checking with me every season for a couple more years here, then I'll finally be able to answer that question. I can see the opportunity though. I can see the number of young bucks on the farm. I can see the genetic quality of some of the two-year-old deer that we've got there and, you know, what they can turn into given some time. Uh, so I'm, I'm optimistic of what can be done there. It's just starting from square one, from a blank slate, literally blank, with almost no deer, and uh, trying to figure out how to create what you want from nothing. And that's fun, I mean, it's exciting. It's fun to be able to take a farm like this that's that raw and be able to do all the work and uh, you know, create that final product. But it can be a little bit of a, a you know, trial of your patience to get there from from nothing to what you're really hoping. And uh, so that's kind of where I stand on this. That's the way I wrap up my season. I mean, I shot a nice buck on November 9th and I shot five does, but there were, that was almost every doe that came within bow range. Uh, it was pretty tough. And my son came and hunted, we didn't see any deer. My daughter hunted some, no opportunities. So that was disappointing. You know, you want the family to enjoy it. You know, I don't have to kill deer all the time to be happy. I love hunting, but you hate to bring people in that maybe aren't as hardcore and give them, you know, zero opportunity rate. Uh, that's pretty rough. 
So I think what I'll do next season, this coming season, I'm gonna have some options. Uh, I'm gonna get permission on some farms around the area. I know a lot of people, I grew up here, you know, I'm third, no, what am I? Fourth generation, I think, on both sides of my family in that area. So I'm related to half the county. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bounce around a little bit more, uh, find some options. I'll still hunt the farm, but I don't wanna have it be, you know, the 100% the all my hunting time you know, on that one place because if it's not going well and I've got, you know, Jordan or Drew or whatever, I want to be able to have options where they could have more success. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. Uh, there's a lot of work to do on the farm and I'm looking forward to that. And you can switch over and uh, start following that on the Dream Farm series that I produce on this channel. I'm going to really dive into the timber stand work, you know, the overall habitat work that's going to be the first thing that we do. I've got a lot of tips and things that I've learned over the years from doing that. So I'm going to probably have the camera follow me every single day that I'm in there doing that work for a while. I mean, you know, who wants to see a guy cut down trees for 30 days? But, you know, there's probably going to be five or six or 10 uh, important tips that I can offer and I can just chunk them out into little pieces. So I can be in there cutting down cedar trees and talk about why, or I can be in there cutting down a hackberry tree and talk about, you know, whether to kill it or not. Um, you know, lots of themes about what to cut, um, you know, questions about whether you do uh, uh, hinge cutting or cut the tree down. Uh, do you kill the stump or not kill the stump? There's a lot of decisions and a lot of uh, little small points with this habitat work that can add up over time to make a difference. So keep checking back for that. I will come back with some more episodes of the uh, Bow Hunting Whitetails series. Uh, I'm not gonna let this one, you know, grow too stale. I appreciate all the viewership we had last season. It, it really did take off well. And I know that our sponsors were happy with that and everybody likes to see things moving forward. So uh, like I said, thank you for all of that. So I'm gonna leave you here. Uh, so the final analysis is, I don't think I'm disappointed with the farm. I'll answer that in a couple of years, but I was disappointed with the hunting. And again, some of that might have been my fault because of how conservatively I hunted. We can talk about that um, during the course of the off season here. And uh, you know, maybe there's some things I can do to change that. Scouting will help me there and, and some, you know, some new stand locations will help. Um, some better entry and exit routes. You know, all of those things are gonna come into play. So we'll cover that as well. So I appreciate you joining me. I'll see you right back here soon for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.